As the country continues to be buried in supply chain issues and worker shortages, the employees of one company say they're being worked to the point of exhaustion. Good evening, I'm Corey Howard. Stephanie has the night off. KHQ's Tana Kelly dives deep into the day in the life of a railroad engineer at BNSF, one of the largest freight railroad companies in North America. Employees say it's a day of long hours, unsafe conditions, and no help in sight. No, there's no such thing as a weekend on the railroad. Steve Snyder has worked as a locomotive engineer for BNSF since 1996. I think that's, where, what are we doing, 26 years? But in all those years, Snyder says the railroad life has never been as unkind as it is right now. You have this mass exodus of people mid-career. They're um, hanging up their boots and finding something better. Just last month, the locomotive union says 217 people left BNSF, a continuation of a longer trend. As a way to handle the worker shortage, BNSF implemented a new attendance policy called High Viz that went into effect in February, a policy they say will make staff more available for different shifts. According to company documents we obtained, an employee gets 30 points for their career. If they miss a call or take an unplanned day off, even for family emergency, they lose points. And if that falls on a weekend or high-impact day like a holiday, it costs more points. An employee can get those points back if they work 14 days in a row. Snyder says the policy pushes workers to the brink. We can't spend time with their families. We can't even go get a medical checkup because we don't know when we're going to go to work because we're on call 365 days a year, seven days a week unless we spend one of those precious 30 points we get per career. On top of that, Snyder works long hours, despite federal law mandating engineers and conductors not work more than 12 hours a day. That just simply means us pulling the controls of operating the train. We can work, and it's not uncommon to be on duty for 14 to 20 hours on one shift, just trying to get to your, to your other terminal. Away from home, away from family. Snyder says it makes living a normal life impossible. And then you come home and after you get home, 14 hours later, they call you again to do it again. No sleep, long hours, and barely any crews. These are hazardous materials that we haul through and the railroad can do this safely if they have rested crews. It's just a matter of time before someone makes a mistake. The policy created such a wave, the union threatened to strike. And on June 1st, BNSF revised the attendance policy. I want to take just a few minutes to outline a few changes we plan to make to high vis based on your input and ideas. Now employees can earn up to seven extra points on top of the 30 with more ways to earn those points. But many in the industry, like Snyder, say it doesn't change anything. If you want more time off, you have to work more. But if you lay off more, then we're going to fire you. After 26 years, a pandemic, it's only now that Snyder fears for the future of the railroad. We're redlined. And it's not that we're just reaching redline. We're, we're past it. We're, that's why people are walking away. And he says that trickles down into the things we need every day. Supplies. I know how to operate freight. I know how to move freight. If they will listen to the people who are actually at the ground level doing the work, we will solve this nation's uh, work shortage, for the railroad anyway, and more, support, more importantly, the supply chain. Now, I did reach out to BNSF, who told me in a statement they have more employees than they had last year, including around 400 that are in the training process or have already started this year. Now, I have a full statement listed on our website at KHQ.com. But for now, live in Spokane, Tana Kelly, back to you. Thank you very much, Tana. According to the Bureau of Transportation, railways moved $15.7 billion of freight in 2021, up nearly 22% compared to the same time in 2020. A lot of those supplies going through towns just like Spokane and rely on workers like Snyder to keep it moving.